I'm here with François Le Bonnier. Is that right? François Le Bonnier, yes. Well, okay, okay, I'm practicing my French. And uh, he's an executive coach and work, that works a lot with the spirituality and I'm here to receive a coach myself during this interview. This must be very, very nice. I'm very excited about it. Thanks for coming here, François. And uh, please, tell me a little bit more about what you do today. All right, so I do many different things. I work uh, mainly with executives, entrepreneurs, uh, and business owners in the Silicon Valley. Yes. But I work with uh, the same uh, demography all over the world. But uh, most of my clients are located here in the Silicon Valley. I'm also an adjunct professor at the University of San Francisco where I teach high impact communication skills. Great, this is nice. And why do you believe Silicon Valley? Uh, there are you, you can have more work here, well. Well, why more work? I think that uh, the Silicon Valley is a very, very exceptional place in this, uh, in, in this world. Yes. It's uh, really a hub for innovation and development. And, um, and I think there is a, it's also a matrix of possibilities. <laughs> I mean, I don't I know like if you've noticed. How long have you been here for? Well, one month, and it's completely different from everything I imagined. Well, what have you noticed so far? Well, one thing that I couldn't read and understand through a blog, for example, is about synchronicity. People really believe in synchronicity here. They help each other. They believe there is some sort of circle where, like, I help you, tomorrow I will have some help someone else, and I will receive help some way one day. And this was what I liked the most here, and it's completely different mindset. So this is really, it's the, it's not only about business, yeah. it's about people, it's about culture. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Right, interesting. Well, so it's um, this, this this pool of creativity is so yes. exciting, right? Have you noticed? There's a sense of excitement. Yes. Yeah? Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel excited every morning and, and once I read this blog post I was remembering this morning that what is it like to be a CEO? And this guy said, well, one day you're feeling like you're having the best day of your life and the other day it's like the sky is falling apart and everything is wrecked. And that was the feeling that I had yesterday. I felt like the sky, the sky was falling apart but one day before I was feeling so excited about everything. So I felt all this intensity yeah. in, like from yeah. A to A to like this. You know, what you're experiencing is really representative. I think that's what a lot of uh, CEOs uh, are experiencing here, entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's really the roller coaster. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huge roller coasters like this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm going to use a bit of a metaphor or some thoughts. I don't mean to offend anyone, but if God was the ultimate creator. <laughs> yes. And that we were made in the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's referring to our physical bodies, but more about something about our essence. Yes. Right? Yeah. As creators, we are in the likeness of God. As creators, so we're here. This is an incredible, it's like being an Eden of, you know, creation. Yes. Because of all the possibilities, everything is coming together here. You have angel investors, you have venture capitalists, you have the money to create anything you can mm -hmm. if you have the right idea. Now, mm -hmm. that comes with some challenges, which is a lot of my clients that actually have, have so much stress because of that roller coaster. Yes. They get out of whack, they get out of alignment constantly, and they are seeking um, uh, coaches or people to help them manage their energy. Yes. You know, find a balance or a way that they can keep being in this alignment that helps them to, to be clear and keep moving forward with a uh, reduced amount of stress. And one of the patterns I see the most in uh, my clients is they have the same kind of uh, um, physical challenges. Yes. Adrenal depletion. They have challenges with their adrenals because they work on adrenaline. Oh, I see. Yes. And this is because um, they're working from, they, they tend to work still from the ego, from mm -hmm. an ego structure. And coming from a place of lack and needing to prove things or to, to make things happen. But they are disconnected of that circle that you were talking about before. Yes. There's a higher circle. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there is a lot of information, but, uh, and do you have any techniques like to help these people? How do you start helping them? So a lot of tools have to be taught, you know, one-on-one -on -one or in person. You know? Yes. So some of them cannot be done through a video. But a very simple technique 
By the way, are you asking me because you would like to experience Yeah, yeah, I would like to experience okay, okay. because yesterday I was trying to do this complete uh, um, breath, you know, where you start here with your belly and go yes. up and down, and I couldn't. Mm. I was completely like, it, it was hurting, it was difficult to do that. Then mm. I realized I'm not breathing. <laughs> so yes, please yeah. give me a technique. <laughs> Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. Just doing this breathing exercise, you realize, oh my God, I'm not breathing. Mm -hmm. And yes. you'd be surprised how many people, 40, 50 year old people, 60 year old people, who are just realizing for the first time, I'm not breathing. Yes, this is true. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to share with you, that would be probably um, the, the first tool that I would teach my clients. Great. Uh, which is the foundation of everything. And it's the ability to be really present. Oh, yes. Nice. Because one of the patterns that create stress is to uh, go time traveling with your mind. Uh -huh. Go to the past and, and you know, like, oh my God, with all the regrets or things that I could have done better, should have done, could have done. Yes. And then going to the future with the worry about, oh my God, you know, uh, now I have half a billion dollars, you know, how is this going to work? I have responsibility. And yeah. <laughs> yes. So how do you bring yourself in present moment? Yeah. And how do you do so? And I learned that in martial arts when I... Uh, started doing it when I was five years old. It was the first thing that they taught us. Great, like five years old, I wish I'd learned that when <laughs> I was that age. <laughs> nice. So it's called grounding. And this is a tool so that nothing can push you over. And you'll mm -hmm. notice, like when you actually, I do this with my uh, students at the University of San Francisco when I teach them this tool, um, is that you can be pushed over. Mm -hmm. If you're stressed, someone pushes you, you, you fall very easily. Yeah. Well, if you're grounded, you're solid and you can respond to life instead of um, reacting to life. Mm -hmm. It's different like responding to life and reacting to life. Great. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. So, um, let's see, I, I would, I would uh, typically one on one person, I would also like push you, you know, so that you can yeah. see when you're stressed and all that, but I don't think in this frame it would work. But I'm just going to have you experience it sitting. Okay, okay. All right. So let's start by taking a big, long, deep breath in. Okay. Should I close my eyes? You know, I think that's best, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have you do a visualization. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. And let's you all can, do you it. You can do it at home as well. Okay. <laughs> great. So sit straight, be comfortable. It's going to yeah. take about maybe just a couple of minutes or so. Okay. So take a big, long, deep breath in. And I just, and, and relax. Let it go. And I just want you to forget about this interview. Okay. I want you to let go of all the unconscious stress that you've been holding. You're wanting to do so good, you know, in this interview. You're wanting to show up, to give most value. But in this moment, it's not about this. It's also causing a little bit of an amp, you know, an over-amp that keeps you a little bit on adrenal. So what you're gonna experience now is how to be grounded and feel that connection that is bigger than you because there's more to you than meets the eyes. There's more, more to us than meet the eyes. We're not just bodies. There's something inhabiting that body. And the opportunity now is to actually start connecting with who you are at that level. Take another big long deep breath. <clears throat> And now I want you to visualize, see your pelvis, your belly and your chest inside the trunk of a powerful tree that has a white light in the center. And see that trunk go all the way down through the layers of the earth. And you're going to see the core of the earth as a beautiful big rose quartz crystal. Let your imagination inform you on how that rose quartz crystal looks like, feels like. Maybe you'll see some sparkles of gold in there too. And start growing your roots of that tree into the core of the earth. And wrapping the roots around the core of the earth. So that you, your physical body up here, is not separate, but is like solidly anchored into a planet. We're going to sit in that for another 20 seconds. 
and let yourself really drop into that grounding. Good. Now what I want you to do is just to notice something that changed for you as you did that. Because if you want to um, experience transformation, you need to use your awareness. So right now I want you to engage your awareness and see what did you notice shifted for you just taking those couple of minutes doing this. In a moment I will ask you to share with me uh, what you became aware of. And also what I want to invite you to is to still be uh, in a good state of positivity when you open your eyes, but also to keep that grounding so that you can be excited about your life and also ground it at the same time and see how that feels different than before. So whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I feel my body again. That is that is the feeling, like I could feel my head, my, my feet, and like settling down slowly. And uh, well, I think it's good to have this just this image that I just created, like that it's holding me together, like that it's not letting me fall apart. Interesting. Yeah. Yes, because, yeah, like I'm here. Yes, you're here. That's, that's exactly <laughs> yes. like I'm here. That's yes, it. I'm right here, right now, at this point of the earth and universe. <laughs> Great. Beautiful. Well done. Well, and I, well, this is nice. I can feel a little bit of energy as well here. Yeah, yes. great. Yeah. Well, so what happens, um, it's interesting you point here, because it's exactly what this actually does. Uh -huh. uh, this can seem a little bit, um, you know, woo-woo, how people call it, or, mm -hmm. but actually it's scientific. What happens when you ground in that way, um, scientists have actually done a lot of research on that, and they saw that the brain waves shift oh. from a beta state to an alpha state. Okay. So the brain waves are different and your brain actually starts regaining some wholeness. Instead of being super focused, there's a relaxed state okay. and it reduces anxiety. Wow, I love that. <laughs> and you felt it, you're like, oh, I feel some energy yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, because you have a new energy flow. The blood is flowing now to other areas of your um, brain. And you kind of have to be open to all this, of course. Like. Yep. You have to be slightly open at least to let it feel. Like if I wasn't open, I wouldn't feel my chakra and things like this. Yes. yes it was and you know, and, and that's actually a thing. You're really tuned in. Because one of the things that I check with my uh, potential clients yes. is are they coachable? Yes, of course. You gotta be open. You gotta yeah. be willing to try something new. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not uh, usual for everyone, all this. So it is uh, different a little bit. But yeah. You should try. <laughs> <laughs> I think Great. they just did. Yes. How are you guys feeling, by the way? <laughs> Great. <laughs> put comments below. We'll find a way for you to put comments below. <laughs> nice. Well, tell me now. Keep, now can we go back to the interview? Yeah, great. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> but stay grounded. it. <laughs> yes, nice. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your past experiences. Um, how all this started? Like, f first, were you a businessman, and then you searched for spirituality, or spirituality was all the, the way, all way in your life, and then business came together, and you mixed them both. Actually, it started with spirituality, and I did not want to be a businessman, for sure. That okay, nice. Yeah, You're good. When I was five years old, and then you know, throughout my youth, I had some uh, body. Um, or physical condition that was creating a lot of uh, discomfort and okay. a lot of pain and I was wondering why me why me all my comrades were playing in school you know happy and I was in so much pain I had to go to the bathroom uh, just curled up in a lot of pain wow. so I would uh, pray to God okay. and every time I would say at the end amen uh -huh. the pain was gone Wow, this is very powerful Yes. So to me, the spiritual spirituality is not something that's abstract. It's always been something that is practical and that has to be practical. Otherwise, it's just, you know, a brain masturbation. And how did you, did you realize that you needed to use these uh, to help others, like in the business sector? Yeah, it, it, that's, um, that's a, a very good question. So it all, like you said before, 
uh, you mentioned to me that um, this seems this interview and the interviews you, you're doing and the work you're doing now, it seems like everything came together. Yes. Maybe before the pieces went together, but yeah. suddenly everything linked up. Now it's all linked up. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So, um, so on my path, every you know, there's been definite steps. I uh, am a violinist player too. Oh, very good. <laughs> and my violin teacher, when I was 10 years old, I couldn't sleep. That was another disorder I had. Uh -huh. So he taught me a breathing meditation. And the first time I used it, I was it able, worked. for the first time in two minutes, I was fast asleep. So I started proclaiming around me, at 10 years old, mind over matter. <laughs> oh, I would, nice. <laughs> if I had stomach cramps or something, I would relax, tell my stomach. So I started developing those, you know, those pathways. Uh -huh. Eventually, I ended up, when I was 18, I wanted to go traveling real bad, and my dad said, come on, you got to study something, you know, and most of my comrades, you know, were doing business. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to study, get uh, business. And, uh, and I actually, one of my passions was theater. I've been doing uh, street performances since I was nine years old. Oh, this is so incredible, <laughs> a lot of stories. <laughs> nice, keep going. Yeah, okay, good. So in 1993, uh, in the business school, I was teaching uh, physical expression and well-being to uh, a class of 30 people, students. It was a very popular class. Very good, very it's, good. So the students from uh, Sud de Cours Bordeaux, from the whole group ESC Bordeaux, if, I don't know if that means anything to me, <laughs> uh, would come and learn how to uh, feel good in their bodies and free themselves. And they would come um, with like, you know, tie and suit and very uptight. Uh -huh. And they would leave the class with a big smile and nice. open tie, you know, and very all relaxed. Great. Great. So um, after I graduated, I um, went traveling for seven years around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, where I really uh, sought to found who am I at the deepest core and what is my role in this life and in this universe. I think that every time you travel, you can, at least for me this, and for you as well, when you travel, you put yourself into these questions like, who am I, what I am doing, what do I like, who I really am, because then you're, you're on your own and you're creating your path during that trip, so you're discovering yourself. So seven years, seven where years. have you been in those seven years? I traveled with no money. Okay, and just my, my yeah. very challenging. Yes. Very challenging, and it's been extremely, extremely challenging. Um, uh, I was eating out of garbage at times. I had no money. Wow. You know, I was hitchhiking. The risk, the danger I've been exposed mm -hmm. to for seven years was pretty extreme at times. And I, um, I couldn't have done that without my intuition and my connection with that bigger yes. thing. Yes. Call it what you will. Yeah. Your higher, higher source, higher good, uh, grand connectedness, nature, or yes. Yeah. Great. Like uh, I like how sometimes you're like completely lost, and then oh, I saw that bus running. I'm just running into there, and then l puts you where you should be. <laughs> so it's like intuition helping you in the, that in that trip in that different place. Yes, and yes. you gotta listen to that inner voice. Yes. And it's the same thing in business. Mm -hmm. So what happens after that? You know, we're talking about the little parts that came together. Yes. Um, I um, met actually an American man in the jungle in Malaysia. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you already know I've lived with the head shrinkers in the Amazon for six yes. months Yes. Uh, before and where I created an ecotourism tour when I was 23 years old uh, in 1996. And so in the jungle in Malaysia, I met this American man who uh, ended up, he was the brother of my wife today. Nice, so and nice. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's why I arrived here. Okay. Because he introduced us, we emailed for a year, he said no pictures, so we <laughs> emailed for a year and then uh, she invited me over and we, we felt like, or rose madly in love. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, five months later we were married. Wow, intense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Great. so um, my gifts at the time were uh, to do healing work, mm -hmm. which I discovered in 1992. Uh, so I've now been doing healing work for 21 years and uh, so I started doing uh, sessions here and within a, a year and a half I got 400 clients in my personal practice. 400? Yes. This is a lot of people. It is a lot of people. So something I was doing right because a lot of people were saying there's enough healers in this area. This, uh -huh, for those uh -huh. who don't know who are watching this, uh, Marin County where I live is just filled with 
healers, massage therapists, osteopaths, and all that. Um, well, there is a lot of stressed people, so I think there is some sort of market for that <laughs> as well. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. But they said, you know, so many people, there's thousands of those. You, uh -huh. it's, you can't have your own business uh, in that. You know, there's enough of them. Within a year and a half, I had 400 clients, you know. So people have been starting to look at me in the community and be like, how do you do that? And I was also seeing, it was confirmation for me that um, they are, when you are aligned with your purpose, with your gifts, with your strengths, mm -hmm. that you've cleared beliefs, you know, mm -hmm. maybe some uh, layers of self-hatred or, you know, I had issues with anger growing up. Okay. So, you know, clearing those things, um, you, you can actually tap into something and have uh, things uh, be successful. Great. Just a, a, a phrase that I love saying, which uh, came through one day, is that success is a byproduct of one's alignment with their true self. Okay. Yeah? Good, good. That success, success is a byproduct. It's not to me, it's not the first thing. I want success. No. Oh, yes. It's align yourself and success will come. Yes, this is true. And success is different for each person. It is. So yes. First of all, realize what is your meaning. Align yourself, then success will come because then it will be meaningful for you. And, and that's success, success. yeah, that's sure. That's success. For some people, it's a lot of money. For some people, it's it's traveling, you know, with no money. Yes, yes, and a balance in life as well can, can be a success. Yeah. Which is difficult to, ch to achieve, but possible. Great. And, uh, well, tell me more, a little bit more. Can you tell who you have helped so far? That it's what interesting, maybe like that was a case of transformation. It doesn't need to say any names, but you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's story. A case of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Uh, so first of all, you can go on my uh, um, website on the testimonial tab. Okay. It's testimonial tab. Website. Love your life and business dot com. Great. Yes. Love your life and business dot com, and go to testimonials, and you'll have a bunch of testimonials that will say, you know, a lot of the value that my clients have received. Yes. Um, but you know, it's um, one of them. For example, that most recently happened is was a yoga studio and dance studio owner in Germany. Oh, so nice. We're working over the phone, and I taught you some tools and tools for creation uh, and how to have the success you want with a lot of ease. And what I taught, introduced that tool to her. In that week, she had eleven new uh, clients who joined her studio, with which for her is unheard of. Yeah. And she hadn't done any marketing, she hadn't done nothing, but they just, just came, came to her. She was wow. like, oh my god, this really works. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she must be very excited about it and kept doing it. Yeah. Yes. A another example that just comes to mind is this. I was working for a water filtration company. They have uh, hundreds of employees. And uh, during uh, about a month after we started coaching, a market opened up for them in Australia. Great. Which is huge, you know, a huge market. Yeah, and well, a huge step, huge transformation. Yeah, Great. yeah. What do you think it's very important to entrepreneurs have in mind? Like, what is the key advice to give to them? I would say, hmm. Well, for entrepreneurs, like we said before, they tend to be out of balance. And, yeah. you know, and with that energy of cr uh, creativity and um, one of the things that are so important to me is um, is ethics. Good. Ethics, so important. Because there's so much power here. Remember what I said about we're like little gods in a way? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here, we can be like apprentice, you know, sorcerers <laughs> or whatever. We yeah. have so much power with money because money is really power that we can create anything we want. And the clients that I take on, I want them to have that willingness to uh, engage in activities or create something that's going to be good for the greater good, Great. where there's a good intention behind. So one thing that I would want to say, why are you doing this? Why are you doing what you're doing? And not just because of the ethic piece, but also because you're going to need a lot of energy to uh, draw upon mm -hmm. as you uh, s get started with your startup or whatever you're up to and bring it all the way to success, to the end. You're going to need the path can be long and require a lot of energy. If you don't know why you're doing this, then you're not going to have that pool that you can draw from. This is awesome. Really good. Really great. Uh, talk a little bit about power. That you, you see, that we can see that there is a lot of power here, but I feel that this wealth and power presents itself in a different way around here. Uh, I, I have this feeling that it's not like, well, I'm up here because I'm powerful, 
and you're up there, so you you have to respect me because I have money. No, like I don't have any money, but he this guy has. But we are all in the same level, right. talking. Yes. Do you do you believe that here there is some sort of at least like this cliff is not that big? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I definitely think so. Yeah. I definitely think so. I think, and that's one of the magic of the Silicon Valley. Yes. Is that you can really actually meet anywhere. You know, I'm, I love going mm -hmm. dancing. Great, right? me too. <laughs> have, have you gone to um, Switch Prairies? No, not yet. not yet. I really need to go there. Yeah, yes. well, I'll see you there. Yes, uh, ne next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so, wherever you go, you know, there's some activities like yoga and dancing and surfing or whatever I engage in activities. And I'll meet people, you know, who are extremely successful, you know, in, in that sense. And you can just talk to them, you know, as if. Yes. Yeah, in France, I would say where I'm from, I'm French originally, there's a lot of hierarchy. So yes, it might in be, Brazil as well. Yeah. yeah, so there'll be this power, maybe power over, you know, versus power with, or just this raw power. Yes, and it's so much better than when you don't put in a hier hierarchy, right? Uh, this is the <laughs> hierarchy. <laughs> yes, uh, and then everyone can talk and exchange ideas. This is uh, what I like the most as well around here. This is really good. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for everything, meditation, coach, interview, all of it. It was great, great. It was wonderful meeting you, Virginia. Okay, yes. wonderful to meet you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how would you say até mais in Brazilian? Uh, yeah, até logo. Até logo. <laughs> great. Até logo. Uh, and in French, would we? A bientôt. Uh, yeah, a bientôt. I've learned that and I've already forgot. A bientôt. <laughs> great.